is up you guys welcome back to another one if you are new to the channel i am gold pony i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we are in the brand new 2024 hyundai santa fe courtesy of jack giambalvo hyundai in york pa for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below so we are in this one today to start because i own a 2017 hyundai santa fe i have had it for seven or eight years absolutely nothing has ever been wrong with it it has been bulletproof i love that and it's paid off so i'm going to be hanging on to it for a little bit longer but this has been a complete transformation for the 2024 model year compared to the previous generation all new interior reimagined exterior as well with a longer wheelbase you do have three rows of seating yet again with the santa fe so you gotta love that you also get america's best warranty of course being five years sixty thousand mile bumper to bumper 10 years 100 000 miles on the powertrain you also get three years or 36,000 miles of complimentary maintenance as well so that's going to save you some money there too but ultimately in this video we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering feel ride quality sound system exhaust clip all that fun stuff so having said all that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing it's uh, as you can imagine there are a few different trim levels for the 2024 santa fe first one being the se starting at thirty-three thousand nine hundred and fifty dollars sel for thirty-six thousand four fifty xrt for forty thousand six hundred and lastly the limited being the one we are in today starting at forty three thousand three hundred fifty dollars so that was all pricing for the front wheel drive configuration if you wanted to add all-wheel drive you can do that simply add eighteen hundred dollars then to any of those prices but regardless of trim level that you go with the power plant on the santa fe is actually going to be the same powering the beast is a 2.5 liter turbocharged four cylinder putting out 277 horsepower 5800 rpm 311 pound feet of torque coming in at 4000 rpm that power being sent to front wheels or all wheels through an eight speed wet dual clutch zero to 60 times should come in at approximately 7.6 seconds for this one mpg numbers then coming in at 20 in the city 29 on the highway for the front wheel drive 20 city 28 then on the the highway for the all-wheel drive taking regular unleaded fuel but so then before we do any kind of fun acceleration or paddle shifter test here in the santa fe i did want to mention to you guys the drive modes there's actually a little toggle switch located right around all the climate control buttons up front here and the drive modes will include sport my drive snow and normal adjusting things like the shift points the throttle response and the steering sensitivity then as well so now having got all of that out of the way what do you guys say let's go ahead and find it straight away let's put the paddle shifters here to the test first uh and let's see how quickly these paddle shifters are going to react for us here let's see if it holds oh wow it's holding that's amazing all right go Paddle shifters, I mean, there's a slight delay, but paddle shifters are pretty darn good. And I guess that's because of the wet dull clutch. There's actually a decent reaction time and you almost never find that in SUVs, let alone having paddle shifters in general in SUVs, but still, they were actually pretty darn responsive. So I don't mind the paddle shifters. That's actually kind of cool. And the other benefit to having paddle shifters in an SUV is when you're going down these uh, mountain hills, like I'm going up right now, uh, if it were to be snowing out, you can actually just hit uh, the paddle shifters, do a little bit of engine braking rather than actually hitting the brakes and risk sliding off the road. So that's going to help you out there as well. But yeah, I like the paddle shifters in the Santa Fe. That actually worked out. So anyways, let's now get back full control to the Santa Fe here. Let me find another straightaway and let's put the acceleration here to the test and let's see how quickly we can get our new 2024 Santa Fe here up to speed. All right. In three, two, one. Go! There it is. <laughs> Dang, once this thing gets higher up in the RPMs, man, this thing really, really goes. But yeah, there was a smidge bit of a delay at the initial punch there. But yeah, that was plenty of an acceleration for the Santa Fe for a three row SUV. So yeah, you're definitely not going to have any issues emerging onto the highway. But, anyways, to go along with that acceleration as always braking is equally important so of course you will find four wheel ventilated disc brakes coming standard as far as braking feel goes it's on the softer side of things it's on the softer side of things no doubt but that's to be expected in the santa fe i actually have a soft braking feel in my 2017 as well so it's kind of something you just get used to it's, this isn't a sports car anyway so it's perfectly fine for what the vehicle is i'll just put it that way then touching on suspension and handling up front you're going to get a mcpherson strut front suspension in the back independent multi-link rear suspension gas pressurized shock absorbers of course front and rear stabilizer bars gotta love that as far as ride quality goes it's actually been 
perfectly fine in my short little test drive here today. So I personally haven't had any issues there. So it is absorbing Pennsylvania's rear imperfections quite nicely. As far as steering feel goes, let me uh, let me put it back to sport driving mode real quick here. It is a weightier steering feel in the sport driving mode. I kind of like that, but honestly, it's what you would expect an SUV to drive like. It does tend to lean a little bit on the looser side of things, so it's pretty much normal for what an SUV is. But here's the thing that I first noticed when I got in this one is the lack of cabin noise. It is a very, very quiet cabin here in the Santa Fe, and that's due in part because there is an acoustic laminated front windshield, but there's also acoustic laminated front door glass. A lot of times that's an optional feature, even on luxury automakers like Mercedes-Benz I know. So the fact that acoustic laminated front door glass comes standard on every single trim level of the Santa Fe, that is going to lead to a very serene cabin as I am experiencing here in my short little test drive in this 2024 today. So huge fan of that. That was the first thing I noticed when I got in this one, but touching our rear visibility because of the shape of the Santa Fe, you're 100% not going to have any issues there. So rear visibility is 100% on point, but we also have rain sensing windshield wipers here today. I did turn them on because it is raining today. So <clears throat> by the way, that's only for the limited trim level. We have that limited. So they have been automatically turning on, adjusting the speed and all that and the intermittentness. I don't even know if that's the word, but it's pretty cool. I love automatic windshield wipers. So Anyways, that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new, completely redesigned 2024 Hyundai Santa Fe. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2024 Hyundai Santa Fe finished in Hampton Gray, in case you were curious of the exact exterior color name that we had on this one here today. But again, completely redesigned for 2024 with a longer wheelbase. I think it looks dang good. It looks like a Land Rover, but for half the price, more or less. So pretty darn cool. But as always, let's go ahead and start with where this one is made. Taking a look at the VIN, first character is the number five, indicating that the new Santa Fe is built and assembled here in the US, in case you were curious. But starting up front, LED headlights with LED daytime running lights do come standard. Got the LED accent lighting coming standard as well, along with automatic feature and automatic high beams. So if you have your high beams on at night and it senses a vehicle coming in the opposite direction it's going to automatically dim them back to low beams and when that vehicle is gone it's going to automatically bounce it back up to high beams for you there you do have the h design found in the headlights though i thought that was a pretty cool pretty creative little feature that hyundai added to the santa fe this year so you guys can see that h in the headlight bezels there i thought that was pretty cool and you do have this cool led light bar kind of tying together the two headlights up front there as well so also a very cool feature there. You do have active grille shutters up front and then to the bottom corners there, there are front air curtains helping direct air around the wheel and tire combination then as well. So overall, that's the front end. Let me know what you guys think of it in the comments section below. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the side. All right, so now since we are around to the side of this one, roof rails coming on the SEL trim level and up if you wanted those. And as far as that handle goes, I know a lot of people are gonna ask about the handle kind of found towards the back. We don't have it on the Limited that's gonna be found on the XRT, and that's to kind of put your hand in there so you have easier access to the roof if you have a, like a, a cargo container up top or something like that. So anyways, XRT is gonna give you that. You got a gloss black A-pillar actually with the XRT and the Limited trim level that we have today. That's pretty cool. Nice little gloss black accenting on the front fenders there as well. Rear privacy glass does come standard on the Santa Fe. Then taking a look at the side mirrors, you will find body color power adjustable side mirrors coming standard. The XRT is going to finish those in gloss black, of course. Heated side mirrors coming standard for all trim levels. You're going to get LED integrated turn signals for the SEL trim level and up. Then power folding side mirrors for our limited trim level that we have today. A little luxury feature there. Then take a look down at the wheel setup. They are, of course, going to differ in design depending upon the trim level that you go with. But as far as the sizes go, 18 inch alloys coming with the SE, SEL, and XRT, and then 20 inch alloys for our limited that we have with us here today. But anyways, that pretty much rounds out the side profile. Very boxy shape to this one. I like it, but let's now go ahead and make our way to the back. All right, so now since we are around to the back of this one, you actually do have a gloss black shark fin antenna all the way up top for all trim levels across the board. Just below that, rear spoiler with an integrated brake light. Just below that, there actually is a rear window wiper. I think you guys could see that there, but it's tucked away underneath the spoiler, kind of like the Chevy Tahoe and Chevy Suburban does. I think they kind of pioneered that, but that's pretty cool because that actually 
actually leads to better visibility so there's not actually a rear window wiper on that rear glass so it's not impeding your vision so i like that actually do you have the santa fe lettering spelled out horizontally it's going to be finished in gloss black for the xrt otherwise finished in this matte silver look that we have on our limited trim level here today h-track badging found just above that passenger side tail light there that's going to be the all-wheel drive system of course Gotta love the H design to the taillights yet again to tie them together with the headlights, of course. Hyundai really going all out on that H logo, but anyways, just below it all, I like this. They expose the exhaust. Thank you, Hyundai. So many manufacturers right now are tucking it away and it's just not the look. I don't like that trend. So anyways, having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next here. As always, here is that exhaust clip. All right, and so now since we are around to the back of the Santa Fe, when it comes to opening that rear lift gate, it is a hands-free smart lift gate, believe it or not, for every single trim level across the board. So you just gotta walk up behind it, so that's pretty cool. But also a power lift gate for our limited trim size. So could just press the button, it's just gonna automatically open up for me there. So that was convenient as well. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 14.6 cubic feet behind that third row. If that was not enough space, of course, there is a 60-40 split. That folds that third row down, bumping that up to 40.5 cubic feet. And then with all rows folded, 79.6 cubic feet, which quite honestly is almost the exact same cubic feet as my 2017 Santa Fe. That is a three row. I know last year, the previous generation, it was only a two row. I actually got the three row back in the day. So it's essentially the same size as my vehicle now. So that's pretty cool. But anyways, cargo lighting found back there. LED cargo lighting, by the way, LED interior lighting all throughout this one. You got to love that 12 volt power power outlet back there there's actually a 115 volt power outlet as well so that was pretty cool to find grocery bag hooks of course you got tie down anchors as well then if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor you will find some in-floor storage actually you gotta love that for like an ice scraper if you needed to put that back there as far as the spare tire goes that's going to be located up underneath of the vehicle kind of next to the exhaust in case you were curious so glad they have that though but then make your way up to the third row legroom that comes in at 30 inches even so on paper that's not a ton but the second seat does move forward and back so you can allow more space for the third row passengers if you needed to that way so anyways for reference i'm an even six feet tall this is how much space i did in the third row there there are cup holders on both sides for those third row passengers there's rear ventilation found on the side kind of of the vehicle not on the roof or the ceiling as you typically find but actually right next to the third row passengers there and they actually get USB charging ports for both sides back there. So that was pretty cool to see for the third row passengers because that's definitely not always the case on the competition. But then make your way up to the second row legroom that comes in at 42.3 inches. Again, I'm still in even six feet tall. This is how much space I have back there. Bench seating does come standard for all trim levels across the board. Rear center armrest with cup holders also coming standard. USB charging ports, all trim levels are going to get those for the second row as well. And they're kind of located on the sides of these front seats. And then there's kind of like uh, USB cord hangers on the back side of the front seats as well, where you could put those to keep the cords out of the way so nobody actually trips on them when they're getting in and out of the second row. So I thought that was pretty clever as well. But heated second row seats coming on the limited trim level that we have today that that's the winner right there i love that but you also get rear window sunshades i was looking at that too so you gotta love that feature as well but anyways did want to also mention the rear passengers have their own panoramic sunroof back there as well the button to open it is located up front here but you can actually completely open that one up and that one is actually bigger than the one in the front so that's pretty cool so they get a view of the sky i'm loving this thing so far this interior is very much impressing me but then make your way up to the front seats stain resistant cloth seats for the se trim level leatherette seating for the sel and xrt leather seating for the limited trim manually adjustable front seats for the se eight-way power driver seat with two-way power lumbar for the sel trim level and up eight-way power adjustable passenger seat for the limited trim level only heated front seats coming on the sel trim level and up i've had those on 
on today. And then ventilated front seats coming with the limited trim level. But overall, as far as seat comfort goes, it's been perfectly fine in my short little test drive here today. So you're definitely not gonna have any issues with that. Lumbar support was plenty adjustable as well. So my short test drive, I was definitely a fan. But then take a look at the steering wheel. This looks like a, a Land Rover steering wheel, 100%. But tilt and telescoping, of course, it is manually adjustable for all trim levels. Leather wrapped for all trim levels as well and actually heated for our limited trim level. I've had that on as well. And in case anybody is wondering why isn't there a Hyundai logo on the steering wheel? There's just four dots. What does that mean? Four dots is Morse code for, take a guess, the letter H. Go figure. So Hyundai being clever yet again, but now let's go ahead and make our way to the startup. Let me start by showing you guys the key here. Once again, you got the H located in the key. You might not notice it, but if you turn it sideways, you might. So lock, unlock, and that circular button that says hold, that's gonna be your remote start. So if you lock it up, press the hold button, then look on the side of the key. There's gonna be some buttons to pop the rear tailgate, but also buttons for your smart park. So if you park a little too close to somebody or if somebody parks too close to you, you can actually pull this one out by simply using the key without actually getting inside first. So that's a pretty darn convenient feature because this thing was definitely parked pretty close to some other vehicles when I first got inside of it. But anyways, I will say the key's a little on the cheap side of things. It's a very light key, so I wouldn't mind if Hyundai uh, kind of gave this one a little more heft maybe in the future or something like that. But now let's go ahead and take a look at the gauge cluster because yet again, impresses me once again. So analog gauges with a 4.2 inch screen coming on the SE, SEL, and XRT trim levels. However, with the limited, you will find a 12.3 inch full digital gauge cluster completely customizable so you can actually change the loadouts on these gauges i put it on more of a classic look but there's also other looks you could display up there as well there's more of a simplified look um, or you can just make it kind of adjust dependent upon the drive mode that you put it on which is actually what i set it to so in that sport driving mode you're going to have a lot more reddish hues i thought that was pretty cool normal driving mode is kind of the classic look and uh, there are other clusters up there you could display if you wanted to like i said but there are steering wheel mounts controls found on the left side of the steering wheel that gives you a ton of other things you could scroll through like trip a trip b of course there's a digital speedometer there's how many miles you have left until you hit empty outside temperature the list goes on and on so pretty much everything you could possibly want on a gauge cluster but now let's go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality a power sunroof is going to come on the xrt trim mobile but that dual pane panoramic sunroof is going to come on our limited that's the one that gives the rear passengers a view of the sky as well LED interior lighting, like I said, comes standard for all trim levels across the board. You gotta love that. Kind of surprised there's no overhead sunglass holder though. That's kind of something I was looking for and uh, I don't know why they didn't put it, but anyways. We do have home light controls for up to three different garage doors. So I like seeing that. That's found just underneath of that rear view mirror there. Melange headliner coming on the limited trim level. A little bit fancy there. Wireless phone charger on the SEL trim level and up. I love that. But the ambient lighting, that is going to come on the limited trim trim level only so that's pretty cool so it's all up front here i see that it's just underneath of this screen as well the infotainment screen and the digital gauge cluster also the rear doors have a little bit of it as well so that definitely looks good and there's plenty of different colors i think 64 different colors you get to choose from so definitely a big fan of seeing that but anyways there's a lot of rubberized storage i want to show you guys so just behind all of these usb charging ports here there's a rubberized place to put your phone and then another one just next to that again it's rubberized so your phone's not actually going to slide around that's good thinking hyundai hyundai definitely had their thinking caps on when they designed this thing just behind that you have dual cup holders just behind that there's a rear center armrest with openings for not the front but the rear passengers actually have their own opening as well where they can open it up to actually see what's inside as well so it's kind of cool the way they did that very smart yet again but one of my favorite features about the interior is the hidden glove box so you have your normal glove box just below just above that you have a little bit more rubberized storage i like seeing that but just above the climate control vents there there's a little button if you press that you have an upper glove box with more rubberized storage in there as well so i like the hidden glove box that's pretty darn cool i like the silver trim found on the doors there's almost a wood like trim found on the doors as well a lot of soft touch material and overall quite honestly i think the interior was done absolutely amazing especially in our limited trim level i almost forgot to mention there is a bunch of hidden storage just underneath of that wireless phone charger here you got a 12 volt power outlet under there as well so i don't know girls can put their purse down there um really anything that you just kind of want to stay out of 
of sight. So that was pretty cool to see. But anyways, now let's go ahead and make our way to the infotainment screen. 12.3 inch color touchscreen display coming standard for all trim levels. Bluetooth and audio streaming, wireless. Android Auto Apple CarPlay for all trim levels this time. Well done, Hyundai. Thank you for doing that. Factory navigation system for the XRT and limited trim levels. Rear seat quiet mode. You gotta love that. That essentially cancels out the rear speakers if your kids are sleeping in the back and it limits the speakers in the front. You still got the voice memo system I'm looking at here so that can record your voice and play it back at a later date. You also have weather information, which we don't have set up yet, but that is gonna be available for you as well. Of course, you have that navigation setup I just told you guys about up there. You can adjust your ambient lighting settings up there, give you your different drive modes up there if you wanted to and of course your radio information and so when it comes to the sound systems the six speaker sound system is going to come standard on all trim levels but the limited so the limited trim level is going to give you a 12 speaker bose sound system so that is the one that we have today so let's go ahead and turn on the radio see what we got playing this morning and let's test out the clarity of this one yeah that's pretty dark good i love that clarity was crystal clear uh, bass was plenty fine as well, so that's a heck of a sound system for this thing and uh, I'm sure you guys know Bose is a very reputable company. They've been around for forever now, so I can imagine that sound system is going to be rock solid. I've actually had Bose sound system in uh, one of my cars before, my Infiniti G35 Coupe back in the day, and uh, it never failed me. So love that sound system but last thing i want to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen at least is when you do put the santa fe in reverse you will find a crystal clear high definition rear view camera that's amazing that's like mercedes-benz good right there you also have the panoramic view monitor there to the right for the limited trim level only that gives you that bird's eye view letting you know what is completely all around you which is always is going to lead us into safety and so first let me start by saying it's an IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus for the 2023 model year, so the last generation. Typically, vehicles only get better with time when it comes to safety, so I'd imagine it would be the same thing. Hasn't been tested yet, though. I'll just put that caveat out there, but front side side current airbags, of course. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard, a blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert. That doesn't always come standard on the competition, guys, so I wanna emphasize that front and rear parking sensors coming standard as well. That's an optional feature, even on Mercedes Benz, that's nuts. Forward collision avoidance assist, adaptive cruise control with stop and go, lane keep assist, driver attention warning, and lane following assist then as well. And by the way, the adaptive cruise control system is amazing on Hyundai and Genesis and Kia for that matter as well. Overall though, when it comes to my final thoughts, I like the rugged new design. I think that looks pretty darn good, but I was more impressed with the interior of the new Santa Fe. Maybe it's because we got the limited trim level, but I love the heated rear seats. I love the rear window sunshades. I love the ambient lighting. I love all the soft touch material. I love all the rubberized surfaces so nothing slides around. I love the hidden glove box as well. There's so much to love about the interior in this thing. The melange headliner, the aluminum speaker covers for the Bose sound system. So a lot going on in this thing. Big fan of that. You do get America's best warranty. So if you're having any doubts about, you know, if something goes wrong, am I gonna be all right? 10 years 100,000 miles on things like the engine the transmission the powertrain things like that so you gotta love that as well as far as room for improvement goes there's only two things that i'm really thinking right now so that's the third row it's it's kind of cramped you can move the second row up a little bit to make a little more space for the third row passengers that's doable but Having said that, if you wanted a little more space, there's always the Hyundai Palisade. I'm just saying. The other thing is, I question the reliability of the turbocharged engine and the wet dual clutch transmission. So, like I said, you do get that 10 year, 100,000 mile powertrain warranty. So that's a little bit of peace of mind right there. But I don't know. Maybe it's cause I love my naturally aspirated V6. I have in my Santa Fe currently. Cause I'm a little scared to try out this powerful turbocharged engine. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think of the Santa Fe in the comment section below i was a big fan personally that is about it for this one you guys thank you so much for watching feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to youtube be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're in any new car reviews that is what we do here on this channel after all do appreciate you guys watching more than you know and i will see you guys all in the next video stay going